Morning guys, morning, morning, morning. We're back in the car. You know what that means? We got fancy coffee. Um, well this isn't really fancy coffee. It's McDonald's Camel iced coffee, but I'll take it today. It's not from my coffee bar. I did not have to make this coffee. So it's a good, it's a win-win on a Monday morning. Well, it's Monday for me, Wednesday for y'all. What are we here for? Why are we here? Why are we here on a Wednesday, Lauren? We're here because for 30-something years of life, People have asked me, what's your favorite book, Lauren? What book do you love so much above all the other books that you read that it is your favorite, that it is your number one book, that it is your coup de grace, that everything else has to hit and meet? And I didn't have one. I would say, oh... I have a favorite book genre, or I have a favorite book for every genre, um, something like that. But I didn't have a favorite book. But that's all changed now. I read Priory of the Orange Tree by Samantha Shannon in about nine days. I had some things going on in there, like I went to a camping event and things like that, so... There were a few things that was... I probably could have read it in easily a week. But I had life things going on that week. Nonetheless, I binged the shit out of that almost 900-page book. I saw the guy on TikTok read it in one day the other day. I don't fucking know how. I don't know how. I want to know what his reading speed is. Did he not take potty breaks? What the hell? How does somebody read Priory in one day? But I almost feel like, and this might be salty or unpopular opinion, when you're reading that quickly, you're not taking everything in. There's no way possible. There's a girl on TikTok who read like 48 books last month. Only like, how? 48? I read 11 and I literally do nothing but read hardly anymore. Like I barely watch television. I do have a family and like a kid and stuff and a job, a nine to five still. Um, so that could play into that. But 11 books, I am spending a lot of my downtime reading. So to get to 43, I cannot freaking imagine. I digress. My favorite book is now Priory of the Orange Tree. And it feels kind of cool to be able to have a book to say. Like, for so long, I didn't have a book to say. I would just say, oh... Like I said, don't have one. I can't wait for the first person to ask me, like, what's your favorite book, Lauren? So I can be like, oh, I have one of those. Why is it so good? The world building in it is fantastic. Fantastic. Um, I really felt like I could picture Virtudom and the other areas. I liked how cohesively Samantha Shannon bounces from characters to characters and place to place. Um, she, you know, would start a chapter and be like, we're in the West, we're in the East, we're in the South. So you knew what group of characters it was, um, what was going on, what the political vibe was. Because the essence of Priory of the Orange Tree is a very Martin-esque political drama with dragons and worms and witches and prioresses, which that's a whole nother level of magic. Um, 
there's a magic system. It was very easy for me to understand. I, I haven't seen a lot of complaints on this book, so I'm trying to, like, address what I've seen people complain about with this book. And I, and I haven't seen a whole lot. Some people say it was a little slow. I did not find that. I found that I was the whole time very attached from the jump. Um, it opens up with Tane's story, or Tane, or however you're going to say her name. I say Tane. Um, she's the dragon rider, and she's my favorite character. And that may be why I was hooked on this book from the very, very first moment. Because my favorite character was the first character introduced. So you have Tane, who is coming up on her choosing day for um, the Medici who are um, people who are from like a draconic kingdom where they still live as one with the dragons and things and then if you go the other direction you have um, Queen Sovereign and they fear the dragon they believe very heavily in the saint and the damsel that's their religion and they fear dragons and worms. They think they're all bad. They're all like the nameless one who is the big bad for this book series. Um, and you meet Yad, I believe is how you say her name. And she is one of the ladies in waiting, but she's secretly from the Priory. So she's really out there protecting the queen. And, um, you meet Dr. Nicholas Roos, who is, um, an older gentleman. He's, I believe, one of the older characters in his 60s. And he is just come on some bad luck. Um, just, he's an alchemist and he's trying to make a life potion. And he's, he's offered it to quite a few royals and kings and queens of lands. And he's all on his luck because he hasn't been able to produce one. So he was actually banned and sent to like this little island for banned people. <clears throat> and who else? We have Lord Beck. Um, I One of the few deaths that really hit me hard in this book was involving that storyline and basically he was the right hand of Queen Sovereign and her in Martinesque to put it in that terms hand of the king well this guy's like the right hand of the queen if you would he's one of her high up advisors sent him away <clears throat> and you've got so many sub stories and so many characters but they all come together at the end, of course. Why wouldn't they? And one of my favorite things about this book is you have a solid beginning, a great juicy middle where lots of stuff is happening, and then a very cohesive ending. It's not one of those where I felt like Samantha Shannon was going to drag it out to four or five books. She's purposely leading us on. There's a bunch of clickbangers. No. There is a solid beginning, middle, and end to this book. And in, in, in 900 pages, it should have that, if you ask me. Though I know some people love their cliffhangers and their, I gotta wait two years to find out whether or not this person's alive or dead. I don't. I'm a person with anxiety. I want a clear ending to a novel. I don't care if you're gonna do sequels. Great. Leave a little room for it. Don't do a cliffhanger and then make us wait two years for a book. That's not my vibe. <laughs> so, from now on, when somebody asks me what my favorite book is, I'm so excited that I can confidently say Priory of the Orange Tree because it is that dang good. The powerful female characters are amazing. There's still likable male characters that you will fall in love with. So I saw on Google that it was like a feministic novel. And I remember seeing that and being like, ah, really?
because I wouldn't call it that. Yeah, they're powerful female characters, but does it have to be feminist to have powerful female characters? There were still some quality male characters. So, I don't know. I loved it. I absolutely devoured it. And it is my favorite book. I hope that if you like political drama, if you like dragons and witchcraft and world building and languages, that you 100% will check this book out. And I love you guys so much. I will see you guys next Monday.